You know, in terms of just raw fun, there is nothing like hunting mule deer bucks in rolling ground in the peak of the rut. It seems like there's a deer behind every bush and the mannerisms, games they play, and all the stuff that they do just makes for an unbelievably good show. It's mid-November and we're on another great adventure in God's Limitless Outdoors. We hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoy putting it together. With everything going on this fall, we only had about three days to hunt this spot. So when we got set up, we wanted to get right after it and got up into a high point and started glassing the country. As the sun came up, we were seeing deer all over the place. There is nothing quite like hunting the rut, and especially when you get these really mild conditions in mid-November. It's just like heaven on earth, and I would sit up on these hillsides all day long if I could just glass and mule deer for weeks on end. If you spend any time watching our videos, you know that we love exploring and hunting new country. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure out where will the animals be and then you show up and it's all put to the test. Sometimes you strike out miserably, but sometimes you hit a home run and this trip was feeling like a home run. There were deer absolutely everywhere. And when you walk into a situation like that, it just brings this excitement and you just know around any corner you could turn up the buck that you're after. So you're just in go mode with anticipation, waiting to see what's gonna turn up. Anytime you're hunting in open country, it means that you're spending a lot of time in the glass. For me, when I'm spending time behind the binos or in the spot and scope, my mind is wandering. I'm thinking about hunts that I've been on before. I'm thinking about what I'm hoping that we're gonna turn up here. I'm visualizing all these different deer. And as I was glassing today, my mind just kept flashing back to a hunt that I was on the year before with my good friend, Pastor Steve. Now Steve is a pastor down in Texas and he had dreamed his entire life of hunting mule deer out west. So when I found out about it, I told him he needed to apply for this area and lo and behold, he drew the tag. So we lined up our schedules, put a date on the calendar, and we started hiking across this country, hoping that we would churn up the buck he'd been dreaming about his whole life. All right, so. We have turned up five or six bucks this morning. One that might be a decent one for Steve, but there's a lot of stuff we're not seeing in the draw, so we're gonna move down, get on a different vantage point about a mile down here, and take a little bit better look. What do you think, Steve? Let's go. You excited? Absolutely. Seeing animals already. Huge, beautiful, beautiful out here. <sighs> yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for.
We nicknamed this buck Lucky for a number of reasons, one of which you just saw, but the other one was because he kept slipping away from us. He might bed down now. This buck always stayed just a little out of reach for us, and the day came to a close. We decided we'd try again the next day, and when we woke up, we woke up to some nasty conditions. It was about zero degrees, and it was blowing about 25 knots. And so we went out, braved the storm, and tried to find the deer. We knew they'd be tucked in behind the little hills trying to stay out of the wind, so we kept that to our advantage. The problem was we were looking into the wind the entire time, and it was brutal. So the situation here is we have Lucky, who we've seen the day before, and we have another buck that we haven't seen really well yet, but we know he's really good looking. So we're sneaking down into position, trying to get a shot. These deer are so leery and they are scanning the horizon everywhere. So we're having to move super slow and keep a super low profile. Dumped him, Steve. Dumped him. That's a great buck. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, Steve. Well done. The curse is broken. Yeah. The curse is broken, brother. Yes, sir. Look at that monster. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Holy mackerel. He's got an extra point, too. Oh, what a buck. Steve. <laughs> That's as good as they come. 
As good as they come right there. It's amazing. Very grateful. Speechless. Limited outdoors, baby. Come on. <laughs> wow, what a deer. Yeah, that's a great deer. That's as good as it There's come. nothing like good memories with good friends. But as I was sitting there daydreaming, my binos landed on a buck who was chasing his does, and it popped me right back into the present, and the hunt was on. As we were walking along right before dark, this buck jumped up right in front of me and I ended up getting a shot off as he was running away. The problem is, we had it on video, but we lost the SD card and it was kind of a bummer to lose all this footage because it was a really cool jump shot on this buck. But nevertheless, super stoked to take a really good buck and enjoy a beautiful evening and a harvest that God had given. Kind of a wild ride sometimes. You don't know which turn's gonna lead you to the very thing that you've been after. Even mistakes. I call God the Blessed Redeemer. And I always say that he blesses what he can and then he redeems the rest. None of us are perfect. That's the beautiful thing about the grace of Jesus. We're forgiven of our shortcomings of our willful sin against God. That's the thing about sin is it's not just accidents. It's willfully choosing like, here's God and I can follow him and I can live for him and I can love him and I can be fully satisfied with him. But then there's this other thing. And instead of choosing God, I choose to chase after it. Maybe it's, maybe it's lust and you chase after it, and you think it's gonna satisfy you more than God ever could, and it comes up short. Maybe it's lying. Instead of speaking the truth, you think the truth is not gonna be received, or nobody would receive you if you spoke the truth, or you're not gonna look as good, and so you don't tell the truth about something. And you lie, and then all of a sudden you become this liar, and you gotta keep up the lies because you didn't choose God to begin with. You didn't choose who, who is truth. He leads us into all truth. Maybe you're drinking yourself to blackout drunk every night you can't even imagine. Imagine going to bed without having a drink. You, I've been at those places in life where you're just like 10 in the morning, you're like, man, I can't wait for it to be late enough that I can have a drink. And you're believing that alcohol is going to make you happier than God. There ain't nothing wrong with a good beer here and there, but when it becomes more satisfying to you than God, that's a deal. It's a deal breaker. It's sin. Because that is the essence of sin, is believing that something can satisfy you more than God and then choosing it. And this grace that's in Jesus tells us that his mercies are new every morning. Everything that we've done wrong, all those bad decisions, all those willful choices to sin against God, that's what separates us from God, our creator, the one who built all this. 
He created all this. He created us the crown jewel of his creation, put us in it to enjoy it and to enjoy him fully. And we separate ourselves from him. And God's got so much more. We were sitting around the campfire this morning. I'm just telling you right now, God has so much more for your life. You may have made some mistakes. You may have chosen to walk away from God, but it doesn't matter what you've done. It matters what you do now. You can choose to start pursuing God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength right now. And I promise you, I don't know what it's going to look like in your life, but I promise you, you will be living life to its fullest because Jesus said, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. That's what God's got for you. His grace, he's going to bless what he can in your life. And he's going to redeem all those junky decisions you've made. He's going to use them for his glory. He's going to use them in unexpected ways. And so I want to encourage you today. There's nothing as liberating as walking in the grace of God. You stumble and you fail, but you fail forward. And you keep going. And you'll find that if you're satisfied with God, if you're fully satisfied with God, there's nothing that'll ever compare. You'll be living life like you never imagined it could be lived before. You have peace, you have joy, you have fullness of life, adventure. God has purpose for you. And I want to encourage you. If you know you've been running from God and you know you need to run to Him and you don't know how to, go over to our website, www.limitlesshunting.com. Request a copy of The First Mile. It's a resource that we wrote that'll help you just navigate practical steps of who God is, how to have a relationship with Him, how to just walk it out in a daily way that produces actual effect in your life. Totally free, we'll send it to you. And even more so, we have video resources to go through it for you. And if you really need personal discipleship and you're not connected to a church, we have groups that'll take you through it. Go over there, do it, it's worth it. God's got an amazing life for you. If you're running from God, you're running from the life that you're actually running, trying to find. So start running to God. We've still got two tags left, but nobody's worried about it. We're just working the ground, working the deer, trying to churn up just the right one and enjoying the entire process. And big tall brows. He's not huge though. He's Big old swole neck, though. You want to come look at him on this? He needs to churn. I can't see details. He's just drooling. Is, he, is that trash up there, or is that just? I that can't tell. Out? Can you zoom in anymore? Look at him drooling. I know. Can you zoom in a bit? Wait. He's cool looking. Right out to the edge of his ear. Yeah, he's only gonna be like 22 inches wide. Look at that shot, that is so cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know why all the big bucks are over here though. Even though this buck was drooling, Colton wasn't drooling over it. So we kept slowly exploring this folded ground and churning up all sorts of animals. We were finding elk in the draws and mule deer chasing all over the place. And we were just excited to see what else we were going to churn up. Nice. Uh, he's, not that, he's not super big. He's only a big five. Yeah. What? He's only a five on his right. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't barely, know. Maybe barely a six. <laughs> The other ball I think is coming out. He's bigger. Yeah, he's six. Nah, he's a good ball. How does the doe look in your... Fine. The doe's T-M-O-A-Y.
Every draw we looked into had a deer in it, so we decided to split up and cover a couple of different draws because we figured there's probably a couple of different deer. Colton and I were on top of one ridge and Adam was on top of another. When I looked over and saw Adam waving his hands like a crazy man, he had spotted this really good buck and was trying to get our attention. We ran over there as fast as we could to try and get set up, but the deer disappeared and we waited for him to come back out. Oh, there's a buck to the right that he's smaller. Don't shoot that one if he's not the one. Oh. Oh, there he is. There he is, walking away. No, but no shot. Dang it. Hold on. Where is he? He just went through the draw. I've got him on video. You're okay. You got him. See where those does are walking up on the ridge, Colton? How far, Colton? Is it him? Did he come back? Oh, that's him. See him? He's right there, right on the ridge. That's him, right? Yeah, that's him. Do you see him on the ridge again, Colton? Yeah, he's facing us. Got him. Mule hot. Mule hot. A little bit back and... I'm on him. I'm on him. He's still up? Yep. He's up to the left. Oh, he's down. He's down. Nice, dude. <laughs> oh, I see him. Yep. Dude, that's a pretty good buck. It's really really good. good. Dude, awesome. Thanks for spotting him, Adam. Thank you. Every great adventure comes to an end, and we thank you for joining us on this one. I want to remind you, it doesn't matter what you've done, it matters what you do now. Chase after Jesus, start your own adventures, and go out there and enjoy God's limitless outdoors.